Today we're going to talk about how to kill a virus. Now, this presentation is inspired by this book. I'm reading this called HIV slash AIDS, Oxidative Stress and Dietary Antioxidants. So they basically merged the science behind the HIV virus and the science behind antioxidants. So it's some fascinating data that I'm gonna share with you. But the question is, can you kill a virus? Well, what is a virus? A virus is not necessarily alive. It's not necessarily fully dead. It's a piece of genetic uh, programming wrapped in a little sack, and it can only be activated when it enters your cells. And then once in the cell, it hijacks your machinery because it doesn't have a metabolism on its own. So it has to tap into yours and use yours like a parasite to then reproduce. But it's pretty bizarre because it has all sorts of programming for um, evading your immune system. So how can you kill a virus? Well, if the virus is not inside your body, you can um, kill it with certain things like high heat. You can kill it with soap. You can kill it with alcohol, bleach, hydrogen peroxide, and all that stuff. But what about once it's inside your body? Let's say you have a virus infection, okay? I'm not gonna get very specific on what type of virus, but I'm gonna go through some interesting things that can help um, reduce the viral reproduction and even kill viruses and even strengthen your immune system to kill it off. You have very specific um, immune cells that target viruses. One is called the cytotoxic T cell, Another is called the T killer cell. And then you also have a compound called interferon, which basically interferes with the reproduction of viruses. But a lot of the symptoms that you experience with a virus has to do with your own immune system attacking the virus or trying to attack it and all the different collateral damage that can occur because it uses various chemicals. It uses hydrogen peroxide, it uses other chemicals that then can affect your normal tissues, especially if there's a hyperimmune reaction where the immune system is just like out of control and it's, uh, it's destroying a lot of different tissues in your body. So the first thing I wanna talk about is some interesting research on the sun, okay? Now the sun uh, provides vitamin D, which directly inhibits viral reproduction and helps your immune system become very, very strong. But the sun also has something else. It has uh, a certain spectrum of light, okay? And the one that I wanna focus on is near infrared, okay? That is different than UV. So near infrared, okay, light can actually travel through your, your clothing, okay? If you have a hat on, it can go right through your hat uh, and it can penetrate your skull. It goes right into your tissues about one and a half to two inches. And what it can do for your immune system is it can actually uh, help you generate um, melatonin. And melatonin, you would think is just only a sleep hormone, but it's really not just a sleep hormone. It's a very powerful antioxidant that works twice as strong as vitamin C. So it can greatly help reduce the complications from a viral infection. It can help to build up your immune system. It can help you sleep better. So your resistance is a lot stronger. And when we're talking about antioxidants, thus this book right here, you wanna maximize your antioxidants to decrease the collateral damage from the virus and your own immune system, as well as shorten the duration of this infection. And melatonin also um, enhances glutathione, which is the, one of the most powerful antioxidants in your body, primarily the liver. So being out in the sun, especially as summer is coming up, is gonna be very, very important. Of course, you don't wanna get burned, but you just wanna be out there. And even if you have a hat on and you have clothes on, that infrared will penetrate into your body. All right, now what about heat, okay? Well, viruses primarily like the cold. This is why when it's cold and you're run down, you can get a viral infection a lot easier. When the temperature becomes above 98.6, as in a fever, okay, the body is attempting to cook this virus. It'll actually inhibit the reproduction of viruses. It can shorten the viral infection cycle. So if you get a fever, the worst thing you wanna do right off the bat is try to 
stop the fever with some type of medication because now you're, the duration of that infection is going to be longer. You want that fever there because of the fact that the purpose of the fever is to heat up the body and slow down the reproduction of the virus. So there's other things you can do as well to help yourself or enhance that situation. You can wear a lot of clothes when you go to bed to, to get more warmth and sweat. Okay, that's important. You can take hot showers. You can do a sauna, a steam room. All of these things will help limit the virus intensity. Okay, I mean, even certain plants create a fever if they get a, a, a fungal infection. So this is a, an ancient um, survival tactic that our, our bodies and other organisms have developed. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is autophagy. Let's say, for example, you have um, an Epstein-Barr virus or a human papillomavirus or a herpes virus that is inside your body and it comes out every time you experience stress. How can you get rid of those viruses? Because they're in a dormant stage, they're below the immune system radar. And so they just wait and they wait until you get sick and tired and old, and then they come out and create an infection. Well, one of the things that you can do is put your body in a state of autophagy. And this has to do with um, fasting, okay? So when you do regular intermittent fasting, you are cleaning up uh, a lot of these microorganisms that are in your body. Okay, so your body is, tends to recycle old damaged proteins as well as uh, microorganisms, pathogens. So uh, fasting is very, very important, especially periodic prolonged fasting where you're doing 72 to 48 hours here and then because it will not only directly remove certain pathogens that are lying dormant in your body, but it will also greatly strengthen your immune system. In fact, if you do regular periodic prolonged fasting, you can basically create a new immune system. You can actually repair a damaged immune system. You can beef up your resistance against microorganisms. So that's a very powerful uh, weapon against these uh, microorganisms. Now, another thing you can uh, consume as a, as a food is, is garlic. Out of all of the uh, foods and herbs out there, garlic is number one for viruses, okay? Hands down, it's the winner in antiviral properties. There's a lot of other ones that you can take, but garlic is at the top of the list. So consuming garlic on a regular basis is really important, as well as if you start to feel run down and you know your immune system is weakened, then start consuming garlic. What I mean by run down is I mean susceptibility. Uh, when your body is in a weakened state, that's when the viruses can create an infection. This is why people that have metabolic syndrome or they have insulin resistance or they're a diabetic or have some other health problem are more susceptible to uh, viruses because they have a weakened immune system. So metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance, huge weakness. Chronic sleep problems, insomnia, because when you run down, you usually have poor sleep. If you have a good night's sleep, your immune system is a, a lot stronger. Now, what about stress? Well, out of all the things I talked about, stress is probably the most important as far as to um, do whatever you can to minimize it because stress affects cortisol. It raises cortisol. And cortisol is an immune suppressive hormone. It removes the immune system temporarily because the focus is on other things like running away from the tiger. So what happens when you experience stress is that you're wide open to have these viruses come in and do their work. So I recently just talked to someone who had a really bad viral infection and I, I asked her, I said, what happened right before that? She goes, well, it's not what happened right before that. It's what I've been going through the last several years, a divorce. You can imagine that's chronic stress over a period of time, just basically opened her up to allow the virus to invade the body to get the infection. There are other things as well, like vitamin deficiencies, specifically vitamin D deficiency, a zinc deficiency, as well as a vitamin C deficiency. All three of those will set you up for a weakened immune system. So when we're trying to create a strategy to bulletproof ourselves, you wanna make sure you have those three nutrients. There's a lot of other remedies you can take from oregano oil to um, colloidal silver, which actually can kill viruses. 
to using elderberry extract. There's so many things that you can do to help yourself through infections. But like I said before, instead of trying to kill off a virus, why don't we just strengthen our immune system? It's kind of like um, something that a lot of people are not focusing enough on. So if you have not taken my immune course yet, it's a free course, I put it down below in the description area. But the next video you should probably watch is how to get your body into a state of autophagy. So check that out, I put it right here.